Okay, we're we're on to the last episode, episode five. After uh, Marty and Doc, the Doc from Universe B, attempted to correct a big mistake, which led to a uh, bit of a police state. Doc suddenly got a conscience about Edna being miserable in Timeline A. So, you now he's going to try and do everything he can to, you know, keep Edna happy. And if it means, you know, betraying his good friend Marty, well, that's the way it's got to be. Side, Marty. Uh, hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Ack! Uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. I like this one. You know, you really should try to work things out with your dad. If you give him a chance, he might just surprise you. I'll keep that under advisement, but first I need you to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah, is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. I think Doc had one of them on top of his time train. Yeah! Whoa! Psycho! Jeez, Doc. Watch out! You almost ran me over! Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, uh yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Doc's a jerk. Where have you been all night? I've been driving around, looking up old friends, thinking things over. Okay. So is that what I'm destined to build for the expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't exist. Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! Science! I don't know how this Doc Brown can exist. He should have been erased. Even if you screw up Emmett's chances at the expo, there's no way he'll give up science now. He's too committed. You don't know me like I do. After he fails at the expo, he'll be in need of comfort. And Edna's already arranged a romantic little trip up to the lake. He's trying to create a time paradox. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. 
My younger self loves science, but if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. You were the young scientist, so I still don't know how he can be like this and still be here. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? What the hell? Where to go? Where did Doc go? I hear something. There it is. Why oh, did you just on. grab it the first time? Here, little static thingy. Sneak up on it. Smells like broccoli. The future is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wondrous wonder on display, because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. The future is coming to Some expert you got here. Where are all the people? What's going here? The Insert hell? ticket to enter. Just go around it. Oh, that's right. Invisible barrier. Well, I suppose we better buy Algae some cakes. Taste so good you'd swear they was bad for you. So does your wife. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering. You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his booth? It's the tall one over there. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie your job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. Ew, I hope you didn't sleep with Edna. See you around. Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Excuse me, Mr. Duto, Jacques Duto, at your service. Could I get a ride in that bathosphere? Certainement. If you've got the ticket. Is he French or is he German? 
Jacques Duteau, famous diver. So you're some kind of French. celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following, yes. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less uh, uh, demanding. See you around. We gotta find tickets then. I think that's supposed to be a clock. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. What the hell is he talking to about? What's she doing here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. Eh, <laughs> duty. Wait, what? Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. <laughs> she's got us there. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? Yeah. I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Harry Callahan really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. What? Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? <gasps> Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. And, well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better, uh, Where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Well, I noticed that the police was whispering to Marty, but Marty wasn't exactly using a whispering voice, was he? Ah, a suicide booth. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. What about the sandwich, then? Can we get a sandwich? Maybe she can tell us why she's here. Hi, Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. Huh? Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now what can I do you for? How did she get back? Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret. 
There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. <laughs> it was worth a try. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Must have been good. So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the glass house, the future furnishings, and of course, enlightenment under the sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself. Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. That's what we want. How much are tickets? Aw, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, Whoa. you know? Thanks. She just gave us the whole roll. You seen Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. Which he way? He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster, and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't! Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Okay, so we gotta somehow stall it. What time is Emmett supposed to go on? Let's see, eight kilobeats past fifty. What? We're on metric time here at the Hill Valley Expo. Tell us metric. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Is there anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? <sighs> I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. <laughs> okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Hmm. Thanks. Happy to help. Totally bang her, Marty. Greetings, forward thinkers of Hill Valley. Brief test. Act casual. He's coming back. Shut up. The amazing inebriomatic. Well, from what the boys in the lab tell me, someday we'll be able to tell whether people have been drinking just by breathing into a machine like this. That's Try true. it out. I don't think so. Why, Marty? Have you been drinking? The electro pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. So it's a stun gun. Now, there was something- A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? Whoa. It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into tan and speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Well, from experience, wire recorders are very unreliable. They break. A picture radio. Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. In the future. Oh, hello, Schmirnoff. You got a problem with a woman? Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. Don't we all? What's this about? It's about your attitude. What'd you do with Emmett, Edna? What are you talking about? You're the one who's trying to ruin his life. Believe it or not, I'm the one trying to save it. From what? From you, mostly. Burn. You really don't know where Emmett is? I haven't the foggiest. 
If he's smart, he's run far away from whatever dangerous. I swear to God, I will. Is that line? Shoot any the next person that says shenanigans again. From Super Troopers. Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend Mr. Sagan told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. You don't really think Emmett's gonna want you back after you crushed his heart and tried to stop his demonstration at the expo, do you? Not at first, no. But eventually, he'll realize I've got his best interests at heart, and he'll come running back to me like one of those dogs he loves so much. But you hate dogs. Yes, ironic, isn't it? Why'd you go and get Emmett's invention sealed up like that? I had no choice. Once Mr. Sagan told me about your attempts to radicalize my poor Emmett, I knew I had to stop him from going through with your dangerous invention. But it's his invention, and it's not dangerous. Okay, maybe it's a little dangerous, but only to him. That's for the authorities to decide. Any chance you could talk Parker into letting Emmett go ahead with his demonstration? None whatsoever. And as long as I'm here, that contraption of yours is grounded. Well, we shall remove her then. I know your deep, dark secret. <gasps> secret? Oh, she has what one. secret? <laughs> oh, I can't help it. I gotta pick this one. You're ruthless, manipulative, and power hungry. In the service of a higher cause, one sometimes has to stoop to low tactics. But I'm sure you already know that, comrade Yakov. Why didn't he call her a bitch? I know your deep, dark secret. Maybe she is working for Kid Tannen. Pretending like you wanted to put Kid Tannen away when all the time you were working for him. Oh, how preposterous. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. Ah, let's rub it in. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Okay, so Artie didn't sleep with her. Why is Parker so willing to do your bidding? <laughs> well, the good detective knows that he owes his current rise through the ranks to my reporting on his behalf. Oh. He also knows that I could just as easily pen an expose about his previous nights of drunken debauchery and evidence tampering. You're blackmailing him? Who's Reporters don't blackmail, Mr. Schmirnoff. We look out for the public interest. Parker's talking to no one in the background. Okay, this look. is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. Yeah, see, he was still in the animation, even though Edna was right next to me. I'm glad Trixie got her old job back. I wonder how she managed it. Let's figure that out. What's in her inventory? Tickets. Nice of Trixie to give me these tickets. They're supposed to get me into all the big attractions. Emmett's static accumulator. I gotta get this to Emmett, but first, I, I gotta get Emmett. Well, we gotta find him. Let's have a look at the other booths, shall we? We'll start with this. Mr. Duto? Oui. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea blessed like me.
that was a ripoff. Well, heavy. Monsieur has a way with words. Theremin. I thought you usually have to put your hand over the actual metal. Oh yeah, the loop goes up top. Oh, it's different. Let's try it again. What? Oh, hello. Play Johnny Be Good. There we go. change the future. Hey, Mr. Guy. How's Eunice? How about an algae cake? Sure thing, Mr. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? But I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey! You're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice! Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, buster! Well, no soup for you either. Hey, Artie. Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic what's for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. Yeah, the same favoritism you just applied to Trixie. You sure you can't just push Emmett's slot back a little? I could eliminate it altogether. Would that work for you? Uh, no. What? I was just remembering a time when you refused to take me to the zoo. Huh? Nothing. Edna Strickland got Officer Parker to close Emmett's booth down. What? Why? She claims his invention is dangerous. Is it? That's yeah. not the point. Is there anything you could do to get Emmett's booth reopened? I am afraid not. This may be a wondrous land of tomorrow, but it's still within the jurisdiction of the Hill Valley Police Force. Maybe you should talk to Officer Parker. He says there's nothing he can do as long as Edna's got clout in Hill Valley. She does have that. See you around. We haven't talked to Parker yet. Hmm. No one in here. But 
I wanted to go in the glass house. Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Oh yeah, so you just put it in your pocket. I think we gotta swap that plant. A fully equipped home entertainment center. So where's the ColecoVision? Wax. It's the same one his son used in Back to the Future 2. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial. Or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Oh, okay. What? That is not a recognized option. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial. Or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4385. Brown residence. Hey, Hampton. How's it hanging? This is Marty, Emmett's friend. Is he there? Not at the moment. I'm afraid he's off on one of his little adventures. Thanks. Bye. Farewell. Conversation terminated. Greetings again, mortals! This is Techni, Muse of Progress. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. Or you can purchase them off of me for twice the amount. Oh. Do we have a time limit? Okay, well, I just got this feeling we're gonna switch this pot plant out. Wait, where you going, Marty? Nah. Why'd you go to her? Yoink! Quick, put it in your pocket! What? So what are we supposed to do with it? Hiya, folks! Detective Parker's secret police recorder. Just like a regular potted plant, but with a recorder inside. Okay. Oh, we have to folks. Parker. Shh! He's approaching! Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? Comrade Shmirnov, come to turn yourself in? In private? With pleasure. You've got to let Emmett demonstrate his invention. His whole future depends on it. I'd love to, kid, but Miss Strickland thinks it's dangerous. Unless you've got something on her, her word is pretty much law. Oh, maybe we can get a confess inside the wire recorder. Any idea where Emmett is? Well, he was working over by his booth. 
But by the time Edna got done haranguing me, he was gone. I hope he comes back soon so we can get this mess cleared up. Hmm. Maybe we didn't ask the right question before. What's a newly promoted detective like you doing hanging out in a science expo anyway? Are you kidding me? This is a great assignment! I get to sit around all day playing with nifty new crime-fighting gadgets, like this! What does that do? Hell if I know! Looks like a taser. What's a newly promoted oh, detective like one. you doing hanging out in a science expo anyway? Are you kidding me? This is a great assignment! I get to sit around all day playing with nifty new crime-fighting gadgets, like this! What does that do? Hell if I know! Yeah, that definitely looks like a taser. Since when does anyone in Hill Valley listen to what Edna has to say? Ever since she helped take down Kid Tannen, she's had the mayor and the city council eating out of her hand. I'd be an idiot to ignore her, especially with my, uh, alcohol-heavy background. Boy. I wish I could catch her jaywalking or something. I'd throw the book at her. Yeah, but you never catch a dame like that breaking the law, darn it. Oh, okay. So we need to get her to break the law then. Maybe we can ask her to pick up something across the street. Get her for jaywalking. You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? That's true, but that's in the future. I saw her whispering about something with Carl Sagan outside the expo yesterday. Do you know what they were whispering about? No, but she looked really guilty. I need something more solid than that, I'm afraid. Thanks. I'll be back. Oh, I hope so. You gotta get this albatross off my neck. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Right, those well, we ask speak her. of the devil. Edna, we need to talk. Go ahead. It'll give me a chance to rest my ears. What is it now? I know your deep, dark secret. Right, which one do we do? Uh, did that one. Did that one. Maybe this one. You know, what you were whispering about with Carl Sagan yesterday. You overheard? Sure I did. And you did a really lousy job at, uh, burying the body. Oh, you didn't hear a thing. What okay. I was talking about with Carl Sagan is between me and Carl Sagan. Okay. I know your deep, dark secret. What about this one? Those charities you were working for, they were all just a front. Uh, so you could wriggle your way into those orphanages and... And steal their piggy banks. Right. Alright, so that's not the right thing to okay, do. Okay, this is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. This cubal. We'll use the flower pot on that. Shh, he's approaching. Recording Edna on the plan is a great idea, but I probably should be a little more subtle about it. Okay, so that is an actual now, thing. Now, can you please leave me alone to do my job? In a minute. I'm not quite through yet. Where are we going to put it? Emmett's going to fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's going to do it today. Maybe we can 
like with the flower pot near the TV? I don't think so. Yeah? Well, maybe not. Now, where were we? It's a Trixie. It's Trixie. Ooh, a chrysanthemum. That work? Ooh, a chrysanthemum. Cool. Okay, call me a snoop. Oh. Okay, it actually goes in here. Wait a minute. I think I figured it out. Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. Now, which one was the telephone? Wait, we haven't pushed the blue button. In the mood for fun, the house of the future comes equipped with a modern home entertainment center. Chinese checkers and everything. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? Huh. <laughs> Some guy. Let's go through them. This is Anthony. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Mr. Klozoff. Klozoff? Yes, first name Oliver. Oliver Klozoff? Listen, kid, I didn't just fall off the poutine truck. Who is this really? Hang on. Conversation terminated. <laughs> Can we do that again? Can we do it? In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Oh, we can't do it again. Oh, wait. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, Techni speaking. Who's this? This is Anthony. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Mr. Klozoff. Oh. Klozoff? Yes, first name already. Oliver. Oliver Klozoff? Listen, kid, I didn't just fall off the poutine truck. Who is this really? Hang up. Conversation terminated. <sighs> Push the wrong one. Why can't you skip? Conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Jeez, always with the phones. Yeah? It's Kid Tannen. I'm out of jail and I want you back, baby. I don't know who you are or why you're doing that horrible impersonation of Kid, but that part of my life is over. I've gone legit. Conversation terminated. Good for you, Trixie. Ah, oh, someone better fix that wallpaper. Look at the placeholder graphics behind it. Checkerboard. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Please recite.
recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say hang up to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Jeez, always with the phones. Yeah? Hey, Trixie, it's me, Harry. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I was just checking out this snazzy phone. Okay, bye. Bye. Conversation terminated. Wow, that's really glitchy. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial. Or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Jeez, always with the phones. Yeah? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Oh, we can talk to Edna. Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure oh, thing, Mr. We Sagan. Can get to confess. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Ah, burn. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. About that plan. I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my pole with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration cancelled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh yes, he's a very distractible young man. Oh, that's what I keep telling everyone. Where is I seem to have momentarily lost track of Emmett. Do you have any idea where I might find him? You lost him? You were supposed to keep him distracted. Oh, I have been. He's just uh, wandered off. Well, go look for him. I've got my hands full with Parker. <laughs> Why are you saying all those terrible things about Emmett's friend? Young comrade Shmirnov, you were the one who told me about his vile deeds. There's been a change of plan. What? Yes, I've changed my mind. I think we should let Emmett go through with his demonstration. was a foreign agitator. That the only way I could get Emmett back would be to scoop him up after his dreams were shattered and... and yes, and... yes, yes. I said a lot of things, but I was a little crazy at the time. The important thing is, now I think you should let Emmett go ahead with his little demonstration. Oh, I get it. What? It's Comrade Shmirnov, isn't it? He's gotten to you. No! I really want Emmett to go ahead with his demo. Don't worry, Carl. You can count on me. Edna, listen to me. You have to let Emmett go through with his demonstration. Shmirnov's listening, isn't he? No, oh, listen! Listen, Shmirnov. I don't know what you're holding over Mr. Sagan, but there's no way I'm ever letting that contraption you've talked my Emmett into building get off the ground. <gasps> Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that! As a matter of fact, there I'm glad go. you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, 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 pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... Well, that was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come galumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have oh. gotten clean away. And I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl? Is Thought somebody so. with you? No! It's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? 
You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Conversation terminated. Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Yeah, better go and grab that. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in Pond Scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! It sounds like Gilbert Godfrey. I labor in the field of porn scot. LG, ladies and gentlemen, is a mysterious and little known biological entity. Through diligent study. No, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Alright, you wanted to hear the evidence? We're gonna give him the evidence. Act casual. He's... Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This'll only take a minute. Our plant recorder! It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Listen. Hide it in your pocket. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Busted. Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? Wait. You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Well, let's take anyway. that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Let's go remove... Oh. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! There is literally only one person at this expo, and it's that woman in the blue shirt. Can we remove the bar Oh, the barriers are gone. Okay. Let's talk to Trixie now. Hi, Trixie. Now, what can I do you for? I don't think Edna's gonna be an obstacle anymore. So she was the speakeasy arsonist I after never said all! That. Kid was right! I wonder if he was also right about whiskey being good for the vocal cords. I don't think so. No, it's not. Thanks! Hey, Artie. See you around. How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you. Forget it, mister. Hey, Mr. Duto? Oui? Oh, we haven't asked him that. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A distracted look? That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were headed into the house of glass. Great, thanks. Oh, that was handy. Oh, he was in there. Hey, Emmett, come out of there. Don't listen to him. Perfect. All right, so how are we going to get in there? Welcome to the 
Atlas House of Glass, the future of domestic life. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas Glass, unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in, or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. The wallet? Oh, it's a sliding puzzle. slide that because it's going to crash into the red wall. Oh wait, it moved it. Okay. Why didn't we just go out Emmett? where we came in? Where'd you take him now, Doc? I know, I'm a bit the next exhibitor on our list is there. Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? You see what happened with the diver in the background? <laughs> he flipped. Hello. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. 
I don't think so. Hey. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of uh, marine biology. But I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with Stop! Stop! Help! I'm being attacked! Harry! What are you this doing? You can't around. assault the exhibitors! You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy's obviously, uh, confusing. I'll say he is. You want I should toss him out on his ear? That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jock Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please, keep it down. The Expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But... If you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm gonna have you expelled from the hall. I'm on to you. Yo, Doc! You would like to learn about the mysteries under the sea? Yeah, that's exactly what I want to learn about. I know you're in there, Doc. I don't know what you're talking about. Professor Duteau, huh? At your service. Hmm. What have you done with the real Professor Duteau? I'm not sure I like your insinuation. I'm not sure I like you kidnapping Emmett. Perhaps I should call the authorities and have you removed from the hall. You're a cold-blooded guy, Duto. Say la vie. Take off your helmet. I prefer to leave it on. The inland air is difficult on my sinuses. Hmm. Where'd you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called a bathosphere. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I'm gonna take a closer look at that bathosphere. Not without a ticket, I'm afraid, sir. Hey! Is this guy trying to bum a free ride? We've got tickets. No. See that you don't. Feels good to be on the right side of the law. <laughs> <laughs> Got tickets? Take a ride in a bathosphere. Your bathosphere. I'd like to see the inside of it. Can't get in without a ticket, I'm afraid. You're not gonna get away with this, you know. As they say in my country, que sera, sera. Mm. We have tickets. You've got to take my ticket and let me into the bathosphere. It's the rules. If you've got the problem, go lodge a complaint. We will. Not sure what that... Hey, Artie. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure. That's a pee ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm. There must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Yeah, let's straighten Professor this out. Duteau, this young man claims you refuse to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bath of sphere. Mon Dieu, what is the matter? The gears, uh, they must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on the problem. Perhaps if you come back later. What if we cut that hose? Hiya folks, it's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit, eh hey, folks? 
If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. Calm down, please. Nah, we're gonna cut it open. So we haven't got a knife, maybe we can use this. The master's feet. Oh, okay. Step back! You're cramping the hose! Oh, you mean this hose right here? What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? Yes. It's really by the form. Oh, sorry. Uh-uh. I'm only giving this to Emmett. It's an old nautical superstition. A crimped horse meets Emmett Doom. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. But there's not. Hey! I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you wouldn't. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? Emmett gets no air until you raise the bathosphere. Uh, Emmett? Who? Emmett, you! You ready to drop the act now, Jacques Duteau, a.k.a. Carl Sagan, a.k.a.? No! You know what happens when the air runs out, to both of you. I command you uncrimp that hose! Funny, you'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I... I don't know what you're talking about! It's as if you two were connected, somehow. By density. Step off the holes. Raise no. the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it. Then neither will I. He sounded like Uncle Fist to this. <laughs> so long. The years they have become unstuck. Suck the blood. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Behind door number one. Let's get you out of there. Uh, Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Oh. Hey, you. He just took that guy's wallet. I think, I think he, he took, took that his wallet. Guy's wallet. Oh, remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now you'd better get back to your booth. Funny before... thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some guy. sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush, I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where'd he go? Do you know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. No, oh, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress. And it is my pleasant task once again Look, to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. It's in my pocket. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Yes. Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are gold. Wish me luck. Turbines to power. Don't have to. Power to speed. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! Objection, Your Honor! 
I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of von Emmett Lethra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity. I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father. I don't that's right. Where is he? Hand him over this instant. The longer you hold out, the harder it's going to be for you. <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Maybe Emmett would come out from wherever it is he's hiding if you tried the reasonable approach. This is the reasonable approach. Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything. So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second. Tell him no. I want to speak to my son. Emmett's not ready to talk to you uh, directly. Oh, God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece. I guess so, yeah. If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. Oh, you get it, get out the belt. Can you two have it out later? You mean after he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah? No! Wait, what? Did he just say, yeah? Can you two have it out later? You mean after he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah? No! Yeah? <laughs> Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. Fear! Yeah? Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Just go deal with him. What have you got to lose? That's what they said to Custer. Yeah. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. It's actually a good plan. Don't mock it. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I'm counting to four and f I'm dry, dry. Here comes four. It, four? He doesn't know how to count to four. So, is your client prepared to make a statement? Yeah. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. Oh, we already did that one. He says it's no use talking to you. You never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. <sighs> Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well, at least give it a shot. Go on, Doc. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing oh. about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like Let's to be young. Understand. You don't know what it's You're like to have three ambitions. You don't know what it's like to have three ambitions. You don't know what it's like to have three ambitions. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they come up on where they must. This is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Yeah, like an Italian family. <laughs> Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. 
And it's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, yes. and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kind of... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. You know what she like? Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Yes. Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it there are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language. There's only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, what? me! And two I dollars? made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... I'm sorry, I'm still getting over the two dollars thing. He actually had two dollars? I'd like to see that two dollars. I'm sure I had two dollars. So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but I by then it was him. too late to. Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Your father says he wants to listen to you. Emmett? Here to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? Pollyanna? Let's see, what's the most... What's the best one to pick? Deep down, he's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to all. my spirit. Uh, apparently not. He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Don't skip it. Yeah, what did you just say? You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No, next subject. Emmett, oh. stop being a dope. You've got your pride, okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. Give May I a chance. come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster is waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Trixie, alert oh, the two good. members of the Ladies audience. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator. It's gonna work.
killed him. Look at that! He's flying! My heaven is flying! Something went bang in there. Hey! Hey, stop! Get back here! How the hell can she uh, even drive that? Uh, you okay? I thought I could change her. Things could be different. Yeah, I'm. How does she know how to drive Get stick? it back! Come on! We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer! Go away! Doc got killed. Oh my god! Doc! Pretty Say sure something! He's being erased from existence anyway. Chromium. Lithium. Potassium, iridium, titanium, Frankium. I'll, get, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean? Yeah, in your pocket. We uh, have the future. I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Edna stole the DeLorean. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. It's okay. The timeline's been restored. Doc, come back. But Edna has the DeLorean. How he gets his white hair. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. <laughs> if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh. <sighs> What was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. He doesn't I give up. If we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! What about your father? Oh, yes, I suppose I should wait for him to finish dealing with the officials. I can't say he was exactly thrilled with the unexpected turn my demonstration took. But you heard him in there. He understands that a life of science has its ups and downs. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... Put the newspaper in your pocket. I'm sorry, is something wrong? Yes. It's a long story. Let's just say I, uh, I lost somebody. Oh, how sad. Anyone I know? <laughs> it was, uh, Carl Sagan. What? The guy who tried to hire me in there? You were friends with him? Strange. But how? Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... 
There's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Oh, come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. Let me guess, don't open it? You've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to uh, something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Doc Brown got the key to the city. In another timeline, he was committed. Wait. I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. I'm gonna find the M. Edner. Put that to Brown. There it is. So we don't. Yeah, it worked. So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. <laughs> the only way I could do it without background. messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? I came to make sure you stayed in the path of science. As opposed to what? The dog food business? Politics. Politics? That doesn't sound like me. It wasn't. Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. I'm me? Nah, no. Edna. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... What the hell? Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy <gasps> of the Michael J. Name. Fox. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can I you know believe that it? Voice. Hitched? Married. I swear. That boy's gonna put his papa in the That's room. the real Michael J. Fox. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on he peed you. peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Error, no. Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? Wait, she? what? You? You're not Edna. Duh. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Oh, well, wait. And a Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? She went in That's home. what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Where is she? When Marty, is she? do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, 
This is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... What happened? Uh-oh. Oh, crap. That's spooky. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. From existence. Wait, isn't that... It's Michael J. Fox again. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. Did your son just marry a Canadian saloon singer named Trixie? Artie? Pshaw, that boy ain't got nerve to ask a girl to the church social. You acquainted with him? Only slightly. Oh, we're just passing through. We Wait. hope. Tell well, us. He might be erased. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it? A hill or a valley? <clears throat> no, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I... I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. She raced in town? When did Hill Valley go away? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. That sounds Say, like Say, if there's anybody who could tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct this to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. I think she'll talk to me. I'm... I'm pretty good with women. The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. I wonder how they got Michael J. Fox in this. Can I drive? Yeah, can I drive? Oh, she's a hoarder again. Mary Pickford. <gasps> Is that the DeLorean? Oh no! Where'd you get a can of spray paint? Burnt? Stainless steel looks like when it gets burnt. Doc, it's a. Look. 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 What do you see? This vehicle has sustained some serious damage. Way to stay focused, Doc. Yeah, nah, nah. You can buff that out, no problem. 
you doing, mop? Put it in your pocket. I'm man. guessing this mop doesn't get much use. Put it in your pocket. Oops. Put that in your pocket. Look! <laughs> Look! <laughs> Look! <laughs> oh my god. Mary Pickford. Where have we heard that name before? Look! <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what? Didn't he drop... Okay, he has a broom in his pocket. The top of a mop. I could flop it on a cop. I could swap it for a top. I can... I think I'll stop. Yeah, you should stop. Wait, why didn't he give that back to Parker? Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. An old saloon sign. Wait, isn't that cool? Too bad it's all burnt. Oh, he didn't, did he? Yeah, he put the saloon sign in his pocket. It's an old saloon sign. Looks like it's been through a few bar fights. Yeah, that looks like the, the saloon from Back to the Future 3. Is that a tripwire? <coughs> Hey, Frisbee, well, far out. Step away from the cabin! <gasps> Pardon us for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us... I don't talk to hooligans! Not a very friendly sort. Doc, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Yeah. Impossible. It's this is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Okay. Hey, Miss Strick. Who are you? Let's be honest. Marty McFly. That's a foolish name. And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? We once dated. I saved your life once, a long time ago, remember? Kit Tannen had you tied up. Listen, Sonny. I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past, because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. Hang on, I'm gonna plug in my controller. It's going flat. Okay. Yeah, none of that sheet what? makes sense. It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? Okay, so we picked the wrong one. Ha! <laughs> well, that's today. We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the Why expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, 
What are you here for? I'm selling Girl Scout cookies. I bought something from you? Maybe we can give her the flowers. I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. I brought you this. I ain't interested in flowers. But when are you here? And I especially ain't interested in talking flowers. Put them away. I brought you this picture. Who is that? You don't know him, but he looks a lot like this guy you did know. Not interested. Maybe? I brought you this. Already got one. We Not must like have brought one. something Edna wants. Don't look at me. I didn't bring anything but myself. Okay, so we might have something here that... We haven't tried the... Well, that's her mop anyway. Maybe the expo tickets. I brought you these tickets to the expo. What expo? The expo you left when you swiped the DeLorean and jumped back in time. Wait, what? Stop messing with my brain! I don't know nothing about time travel and I never did. And what's more, I never talk about the past! We didn't say time travel. Were you expecting anything, uh, in particular? I wasn't expecting you. I brought you... him! Him! Oh. Ho him! Him ho! Uh... Well, she might know him as Carl Sagan. Sure, you remember him. Carl Sagan. Uh, the guy you framed as a speakeasy arsonist. Speakeasy? Arson? That's complete gibberish, Sonny. Whatever you're talking about's got nothing to do with me. I never involve myself in such criminal shenanigans. Still, his features remind me of someone. Um, Christopher Lloyd, maybe? This is Doc Brown, the guy who built the car you stole. Stole? I never steal! I'm a law-abiding citizen. Still, there is something familiar about those features. Sure, I don't know you from somewhere. Um, Suburban Commando, Adam's Family, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Look hard! Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend! My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um... He's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. Whip it out. It can't be. Emmett. Yes, Edna. That it's works. me. It is. It's October 13th, 1931. Oh, and you are. Emmett, so oh, how did I get so turned around? H have I been dreaming or well, stay there? It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. How many locks are on that door? None. Ah, she looks like Doc. Darling, you've come back. Go get a tiger. Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tiff. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? 
uh, like Schmuckums. Uh, oh, Schmuckums is there. Schnookums. Schnookums. <laughs> you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic... What's this? Um... Huh? Okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh! What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Hmm. Okay. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. Wait, what? I won't have you spreading stories about me. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. Okay. Hey, the steering wheel didn't melt. I hate to see it like this. I don't think any DeLorean owner wants to see it like that. I wonder what's cooking. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah, I can wait. What was in there? Help me out here, Help Danny. me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. What's that? Who's there? Please, Marty. Don't interrupt the trans. Is that Buford? Edna's grandfather, oh, no. Marshall Strickland. That's the same picture I saw in Edna's apartment way back in the future. What do you mean the past? This hat doesn't frame her face very well. Inside? It's locked. Oh, okay. Help me figure something out. Yes? I'm not sure what she's searching for. Did Detective Parker do something to Edna at the expo? Yeah, he tried to arrest her. That must be it. Can you think of a way to prompt her memory? Explain something to me, Doc. Edna jumped to the past and made Hill Valley disappear, right? That's the working hypothesis. Then how come we're still around? Whatever Edna did to Hill Valley must have happened so long ago that the ripples in the time stream haven't caught up with us yet. So how long do we have before the ripples catch up with us? Oh, I'm sure we've got at least an hour before everything goes to hell. Great. Time is relevant to the Observer. If we don't restore the timeline, I'll never be born, r right? Probably not. But even if we do restore it, my grandpa's gone and married the wrong woman. Either way, I'm hosed. One crisis at a time, Marty. Right now, let's worry about getting the full story out of Edna. 
Edna used the DeLorean to jump into the past. I wonder why she never jumped out again. Put yourself in her shoes. Unexpectedly propelled into the past by an unreliable time machine. Would you risk another trip? I might. Me too. Maybe we could check the time circuits to find out what date she landed. We could, if there's anything left of the time circuits, but I'm afraid they rusted out long ago. Yeah, stainless steel cars don't rust. When do you think it died? The DeLorean, I mean. That vehicle hasn't been operational in a very long time. My guess is, whatever happened to Hill Valley also happened to it. It got burned down. Lawrence burnt. She burnt down the saloon, didn't she? That makes sense. You know, I've been dealing with Edna Strickland a lot lately, and I've seen her old and I've seen her young, but I've never seen her so that shit crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was funny. I still can't believe my grandpa married Trixie. What are we gonna do about that? It's a dire situation, but I'm afraid I'll have to take a back seat to unraveling this unspeakable catastrophe. I'll figure something out. I'm sure you will. Here's something that'll make you remember. Remember what? I don't like to remember. Who are you? What are you doing in my yard, you hooligan? No, Edna. No yard. What? This is Emmett speaking. It's October 13th, 1931. Yes. And something's about to happen. Oh, yes, something big. But what? Better not talk to her directly. It'll break the spell. Talk to her directly? What, we need to talk to her in the third person? Help me, Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. Edna's hat. I think her fashion sense has gone by the wayside. The top of a mop. I could flop it on a cop. I could swap it for a top. I can... I think I'll stop. Yeah, that's not a top of a mob. That's a full mob. Not sure what that... Maybe burn the hat? Not sure what that... Put the hat on top of the cactus? Oh, okay. It nice like fit. Person. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. What else can we do to it? Give it a shield? Not sure what that... Give it a broom? Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. Maybe, Maybe this will take you back. Oh, back indeed. where? I don't want to go back. Stay in the moment, Edna. Please, Marty. Don't interrupt the trance. Maybe this will take you back. Please, Marty, don't interrupt the trance. What 
about that stick. Pull the outhouse. Oh, we can't. Ow! Get out! Get out! Get out! Don't upset her, Marty. I guess this isn't the right time to be burning things. Mary Pickford. Now, where would she pick up a fake name like that? That's what I want to know. I hate to see it like this. Oh, there's no sign. A blacksmith sign. Put I wonder if it's from Doc's old shop. Oh, wow. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. Help me figure something out. Yes? I'm not sure what she's searching for. Did Detective Parker do something to Edna at the expo? Yeah, he tried record. to arrest her. That must be it. Can you think of a way to prompt her memory? I'll figure something out. She wants to know the present. That happened in the present. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... She saw the cactus. Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh, he's after me. Ha! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the She's future. Reenacting it. Curses! I can't shake him. Well, no use in holding back now. Let's see what this baby can do. And here it comes. Yes? Here what comes? I, uh, I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, well, come to think of it, it how can time. I be expecting something unexpected? At, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Um, time travel, uh... Uh, loud noise, flash a light. Fire? Flash a light. Loud noise. There's your loud noise as you flash a light. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... I guess this isn't the right time to be burning things. Ouch! It's all different. 
It's so small and primitive. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, I shot by the I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man. This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Wait, what? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure. But all the buildings are so sturdy and well kept. And the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century. And I know the reason why. Why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? <gasps> this <sighs> big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen. Buford's father. Tannen. Yes. Good guess. Look at Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony. And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh, 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 what? I don't well, know. It's something I don't like. Something evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. Wait, yeah, Beauregard, is that the father or is that the son? Wait a minute, let's see. Biff. If kid, it might be the sun. The wave. Buford was hung for the murder of Marshal Strickland, or robbing the Pine City stage, depending on the timeline. How could he have a kid? Maybe this will take you back. Please, Marty, don't interrupt the trance. I guess this isn't the right time to be burning things. Tell me, Andy, Danny. She's got a point, Marshal. You could have run Tannen out of town and saved us all a lot of trouble. What's that? Who's there? Please, Marty, don't interrupt the trance. with that not sure what that oh 
Oh, there we go. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! I Grandpa, did. you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. Uh... Maybe you push the saloon down. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You've never pushed a saloon down before? Burn it down. Pretty sure she. When she burnt down the saloon, it would have spread to all the other wooden buildings. No! You're doing it all wrong! It'll never burn like that! First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now. Watch. Smells like poo. Isn't it beautiful? The devil's handiwork consumed by the fires of righteousness. <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh, oh. What is it? Edna? Is it the fire? Turn away! Oh, Don't look. It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> but I lay it all too thick. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed by fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story, am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months' worth if you shoot those fellows. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. See you, Michael. So this is before Back, uh, Back to Future 3. That was 1885. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. So is this his brother or is this his father? Because we're before 1885. Beauregard must be the father of Mad Dog Tannen. I think I liked it better on the outhouse... I'd better not get too close. It's funny that Beauregard owns this tannin. A t tannin tappin. Because old Biff Tannin ended up owning the Cafe Eighties. <laughs> oh, 
fleshy. I'd better not get too close. <laughs> I'd better not get too close. Sure, what that I think I liked it better on the outhouse. Should have been lit by those fumes. Who's there? Edna, stop. It, it's just me. Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was gonna ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't sure, think so, Clara's Mary. Outfit. I don't like shooting women. But no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! If you shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up! Edna, stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out, unless somebody manages to disarm both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? You do enlighten us, Doc. Chandelier, maybe? Chandelier's right over their heads. That's gotta be useful somehow. Oh, take that. Was that a mouse? What's the matter, Miss Pickford? Scared of a little mouse? No, but you should be scared. Mice carry diseases. It's a fact. Look it up. Why are you so hellfire determined to middle and Dolores Miskin? Don't know who that is. Man, this thing is not light. What? You can't put it in your pocket? Maybe we can drop him on his head. <clears throat> uh, oh, we gotta move him. <sighs> Maybe we gotta move the wall. <clears throat> Mary Pickford? Don't tell me that you're not traveling through time. right over his head, but I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. The sandbag's right over Tannen's head. Well, there's a sandbag over Tannen's head. I wonder if I can get something over Edna's torch. Maybe we can come to a more peaceable solution, Mr. Tannen. Hang in there, Doc. I gotta find some way to snuff out Edna's torch without getting her and Doc killed. Maybe wet it? If I don't figure out some way of dousing that flame, Edna's gonna burn down the town. <laughs> Heavy. Not quite. Okay. Pickles. That could work. Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. Say, that's a lovely chandelier you've got there, Tannen. Is it French? French? 
No, I got it off a wagon that had the misfortune of being robbed the week before I struck it. What does that do? Man, this thing is not light. Are you here to hold? Wait, something else here. I wonder what's in these. Oh, stop! Quiet! Gah. What the hell? Oh, cow crap! There goes all my pickled pig's feet! like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of Gomorrah, Tannen. Yeah, that's clear. A hundred years from now, Hill Valley will erect a statue in my honor. Ugh. All right, physics. Okay. Now get that... Oh, wait, the barrel's upstairs. There's a sandbag over Tannen's head. I wonder if I can get something over Edna's torch. Gotta get that barrel. Does it roll around? It might. What kind of odds would you give me that I can disarm you and douse you? It's no wonder the town went up. I can smell the kerosene from here. Dolores Miskin? Why are you dressed like that? I wasn't planning on visiting the 19th century today. And I wasn't planning on sh If I had a gun, I could probably outdraw Tannen, but I don't. Was that noise? What noise? I didn't hear a noise. Maybe we can come to a more Okay, that was lucky. Won't be long now. We'll How just did they not see. see that? Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Come on, you son of a... Ha! 
What? Who the hell are you? I'm the diversion, butthead. And that's the origin nice of Nice one, Doc. Don't tell Clara. She thinks Fistikov set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. Edna's DeLorean. We've got to stop her before she hits 88 miles per hour. Come on! To the Batmobile. Okay, Edna, nothing to be worried about. You're a smart woman with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! What's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she'll manage to accelerate 88 miles an hour anytime soon. How are we gonna stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate self put all over her Peloria have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux signalization modules. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes. But we might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate Lloyd's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to win both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate Lloyd. At least that's the theory, anyway. That's a great plan, I think. Best of all, we won't need to weld the modules to the frame. Snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Good question. Let me think. Aha! A hoverboard! It saved our hides a few times before, so it seemed like the appropriate tool to bring along for the job. Sweet! Why didn't Doc give that back to him after he came back from the train? You okay? It's just like riding a bike. You ready to make the jump? Ready, Doc. One, two, three, jump! Whoa. Nice form, buddy. How's the reception on the wireless? Great. Where'd you get these? From Burns Cash, a 21st century video game console. Now remember. All you've got to do is attach the flux-sync modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. Mr. Fusion, should I disable it? Leave it alone. It's not a good idea to monkey with nuclear reactors. It's cold fusion, but okay. But it's getting a little bumpy out here. I already put a flux override here. from here. Is that one of the flux emitters? Yes. Now plug in the flux sink. Oh, 
we can't do it because we're going to get back to that front. Don't cross through those flames, they may be radioactive. I don't even like crossing through normal flames. I better not touch it now that it's synced. I'm okay, I'm okay. It from here. We just have to climb onto the top. Not sure what that it's locked. Radioactive. I don't even like crossing through normal flames. Mr. Fusion's belching flames! Yes, that's unfortunate. I'd stay out of them if I were you. Wait, we can close it. Not sure what that... Marty, you said board to close it. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... Talk to her from here. Maybe that can reach. Nice work, Mark. Sure, with that. It's locked. Made it. Excellent. Now let's get that flexible ride mount along before she starts making life difficult. She's been making it easy up till now. Well, here goes nothing, Doc. Whoa! Perfect! Now, aim the focusing towards the receiving dish on my DeLorean. Uh, receiving dish, receiving dish. Uh, check! I already put a flux override ah. here. It's one of the flux emitters. I can't reach it from here. Wait, she opened the window. Distract. Not sure what that. Not sure what that. It's locked. Pull over! No! Seriously? 
seriously, did she try every button in this DeLorean when she stole it? Whoa! whoa. Uh. Oh, we're on the road Excellent, again. Marty. Now that you're on top of the DeLorean, you can attach the flux sink to the overhead flux emitter. That's great, Doc. It's stuck. Don't worry about the hoverboard. Let's get that last module synced up. Boat's holding that door shut. Ha! Nicely done! Now, aim the sink toward the receiving dish! Ha ha ha! I'm sorry, cohesion of Edna's DeLorean is decaying at an alarming rate. English, Doc. It's gonna You've got to get Edna home. Now! Then I must be back in... Would you be kind enough to tell me what day it is? It's the day I place you under arrest for arson, resisting arrest, and, and be being a, a general all-round pain in the what? ass. What? No! You can't arrest me! Not now, I just got back from the last century. Would you look at that? Edna Strickland, drunk as a skunk. I'm not drunk, you reprobate. I'm a time traveler. Sure you are. <laughs> I'm loving this. I I'll prove it to you. Come with me. We can do the whole day over if you want. We can fix everything. We can start by drying you out. Come on, into the station with you. You can bunk with me, doll. I'd rather die. Stop it! Unhand me, you dolt! <laughs> well, I guess that's it for Edna. Yes, I suppose it is. You know, whoever said time heals all wounds didn't know squat about time travel. What do we do about that, DeLorean? No need to do a thing. Ever since we synced up the time circuits, the temporal breakdown in Edna's DeLorean has accelerated at an exponential rate. By my calculations, the timeline should catch existence. up with it in five, four, three, two, one, now! What the hell? Hey, Parker, you're not gonna believe this! See? what I say? Ready to go home? Wait, Doc, the timeline's not fixed yet. Look! Harry, you missed all the fireworks at the expo. Yeah, so I heard. Listen, I heard a rumor about you two. I guess we gotta come clean. Ta-da! Hardy took me to Reno last night. Try to keep a secret in Hill Valley. <laughs> well, you're gonna congratulate us or what? Then it's true. My grandpa's married the wrong grandma. I'm done for. No. Hey, are you feeling all right, kid? You don't look so hot. That has to be his grandma. Artie, you can't do this. You're not supposed to get married for another five years. Well, I know Trixie and I were taking things slow. But after that witch Edna got me fired with that postcard, we kind of accelerated things a little. The postcard? Oh, man. Naturalized from American. American. 
Trixie, you can't marry Artie. Is this about my past with Kid? Cause Artie ain't holding that against me. That's right, darling. The past is the past. Yeah, but... Can you see through me? Nope. Never could figure you out. I thought you'd be thrilled for us. You don't understand. You're supposed to marry Sylvia Miskin. But I did marry Sylvia Miskin! Thought so. What? You didn't think my real name was Trixie Trotter, did ya? Don't feel too bad. It was kind of a surprise to me, too. Wait a minute. You're Grandma Sylvie? Grandma? Hey, how old do you think I am, kiddo? Uh, but you're so... so skinny and blonde and... Huh. Pretty old. Oh my god, I've seen you naked. You're Sylvia? Are you okay, pal? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. You kids go off and have yourself a wonderful honeymoon. And don't worry about your dad, Artie. I'm sure he'll come around. Come around to what? Um, to approving your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. Well, that was before I got a look at her. Besides... As my dear old father Seamus used to say, no sense in getting riled up over something I can't do nothing about. And honestly, now that I met her, I can't imagine a better daughter-in-law than the charming Miss Sylvie here. Aww, thank you, Dad. As for you, stranger, I'll thank you to not go poking your nose in McFly family business. <laughs> that felt weird, didn't it? It's been a pleasure, Agent Callahan. Shook like a wet fish. See you in the funny papers, Harry. Goodbye, Grandma. You know, I took some pictures of Trixie in 1931. Hey, that's my hey. grandma you're talking about. Can we see those pictures? Oh, back in the Hungry Jack's Burger King parking lot. Here we are, back in good old 1986. May 14th? 15th. Best to build in a little lag time. Gives you a chance to catch up. Looks like the estate sale is still going on. Hey, don't you want to stay, Doc? You gotta stop the bank from selling off all your old stuff. What are you talking about? Estate sale? Bank? I'm not dead, Marty. Clara and I are having a little garage sale, that's all. Garage sale? You mean... Marty, you're back from your trip. Hello, Doc. Selling off the family treasures, eh? Uh, not quite, but I hope you find something you like. Speaking of which, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I sure did. Great! Hey, is that a box of Asimov? A box of what? Let me get this straight. Are you telling me you live here now? In 1986? Well, naturally. Claire and I maintain a part-time residence here. Wasn't that the case when you left? No. Strange. I can't imagine not sticking around. After all, I've got my late father's foundation to supervise. If I wasn't here, who'd present the annual Earhart Brown Scholarship for Young Scientists? <laughs> Something funny? I'll explain it to you later. I don't see what's so funny about looking after a family legacy. Oh, almost forgot. I've got something for you. Happy graduation. Graduation? But that's not for another... The McFlies of Hill Valley. An exhaustively detailed history of your family. From your great-great-grandfather Seamus to the present. You traveled through time to write this? Well, most of the research was done traditionally. But your grandma Sylvia proved to be something of a mystery. Which is why you traveled back to 1931 uh, to look for her. Exactly. Who knew she was singing in a speakeasy on her stage name? This is great, Doc. Thanks. Ah, uh, it's the least I could do for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Yoo-hoo! Dr. Brown! Is she happy? Edna? Edna? Yiny! What's going on? What are you doing at my door? The same thing I do every afternoon, silly man. Giving him such much needed exercise? Isn't that right, Einstein? Hey, Dollface, it's past <laughs> time for our 3.30. Coming, sweetie! 
It's oh, Kim. Mr. McFly, have you seen my stepson anywhere? Oh, Biff, I think you're late for an appointment. Oh, uh, well, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, uh, hi, Marty. Don't they make a great little family? You'd never know they met in prison. Asimov or books? Isaac Asimov. Don't say anything. Let's just walk quietly into the lab and hope there are no more surprises. Marty, you can't be here. If your younger self sees you, the consequences could be catastrophic. My younger self? Oh, right. Bring him along, too. This concerns all of us. What do you mean? Does something happen to us? Do we turn into assholes or something? <laughs> nah, we're fine. But our great-great-grandkids? They're... What the hell? Great what Scott. the hell? It's playing! Why would you paint Doc, the DeLorean? You gotta come back with me. Back Don't to listen to him, Doc. It's me you gotta help. If you want to save Jennifer and our 12 kids. What? That timeline was overwritten five jumps back. Doc, Jennifer's how can there be two more of me here? I have no idea. My all rights of space-time continuum should be tearing apart like a cheap dish rag right now. It already is. What my evil twin and I are trying to say is the future is totally jacked up. And you gotta come with what me to save it. No, me! So... We meet at last. You've altered my timeline once too often. What's going on, Doc? Well, we do seem to have a conundrum on our hands. Or three. Yeah, Doc, but which one is the real me? Isn't it obvious, Marty? Nice. Come on! Not. Prepare to be erased. Doc, wait! What about the space-time continuum? Yeah, what about my future? And mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. But the DeLorean's guy. Where to, Doc? Mr. McFly, thrill me. I thought he lived next to a Burger King.
love this game. It's a shame Tiltale went bust. Click on that last thing. I think it's a making of video. Let's watch it. The history of Back to the Future in video games has not been a pretty one, and so. My mandate to Telltale when they said we're going to do Back to the Future is this game cannot suck eggs. Uh, I was aware of his frustration at previous attempts at making a game. Definitely the, the first time we met we talked about that. You know, with Telltale, our process starts with the story and the characters and we apply the story mechanics later. And I think that people were really excited about the potential of where this could go because we really want to protect the license and, you know, also for us, like, Getting Bob Gale's sign off was everything. There's never going to be a Back to the Future Part 4. We're not doing that. But Telltale's Back to the Future game is pretty close to what a Part 4 could be. Making a Telltale game is sort of modeled after the TV episodic model, where um, we, instead of telling one story at once, we tell a bunch of stories that are all connected over the course of a season. So in Back to the Future's case, it was five episodes. Uh, so first we figure out like the really rough story arc. Um, and that's kind of where everything starts. We would have roundtable meetings with the Telltale guys who would come down to L.A. We got to talking about things. I proposed that we go back into Doc Brown's youth because this was an idea that Bob Zemeckis and I had had way early on when we were trying to figure out what Back to the Future Part Two was going to be about. And instantly, like, all of the fans in the room just went, yeah, that's why we should do this. That's the story we want to tell and explore. And then it was all just a matter of, okay, well, we have this basic idea, how do we get the player involved? What is, you know, obviously we want it to be a Doc and Marty story. That was kind of the core of what the films are. And so we started there, came up with the problem for the whole series um, of Doc getting stranded back in time. Then we go in and start actually kind of creating the concept art. I remember seeing that first Marty sketch was another key moment in the process where we're like, okay, that's the thing we were most worried about in this production. We've got that figured out, now we can move on. Well, the best part of the Telltale guys on the game were they were huge fans of the movie, and they wanted to get it right. They, they wanted really to be true to the spirit of Back to the Future. Another like, really important part of the process for us was getting the actual actors from the movie to be involved. From the very get-go, when the, the game was first pitched, we said, we have to get Christopher Lloyd. If we're going to be doing Doc Brown in a huge speaking role, it's got to be right. Uh, I think it's great. I want a fa you know, fabulous idea. Uh, it's certainly timely. How many video games are hot? And uh, this is great material. I mean, it should be, should be a lot of fun. Great Scott! Having Tom Wilson come back for some voiceover now is rad. Tom as Biff, episode 103, take one. You lucky your old man's here, butthead! I feel like that guy is just one of the huge parts. Like, you can't have a Back to the Future game without Biff. He moves his neck more. He uh, uses his jaw more than I do. You know, th things like that. So with every character in the movie, I would think about those things. So it's, it's there. I don't have to watch everything. Because I remember those cues also, the, the physicality. Although in voiceover, it doesn't matter so much. But as, as you see, maybe in the, in the B-roll, you see, you know, I'm being, trying to be physical to, to, uh, to get you know, to get back into it, to, to, um, to be able to do it right. And then having Claudia Wells come in too, like she was, I think, right off the bat, you know, interested as well and heard that kind of the band was getting back together. Jennifer? What the hell? The coup of all coups was getting Michael J. Fox to participate and be the voice of one of the McFly ancestors. Well, yeah, so when we were trying to get all the cast together, um, we spoke with Michael J. Fox, but due to time commitments, couldn't be 
you know, full time like we needed him. But we got him to do the cameo, which was awesome. And I almost feel like that was a really, almost a cooler use of him nowadays. But then the search turned to how do we find someone to do a Marty who can just come in and be our main character. And it was a really big worry for a while. I voiced Marty McFly in Back to the Future of the Game. That is what I did. Jesus Christ, Doc, he disintegrated Einstein. Pressure, yeah. So to be like, oh, you know that amazing, iconic role that everyone loves and knows and can quote lines from and that incredibly famous, wonderful actor, Michael J. Fox. Can you just replicate that? That's what I had going on in the back of my head. So yeah, it was a lot, a lot of pressure. Uh, at one point, we got an email from our accountant who said that she'd gotten emailed an MP3 from some kid who said he would like to be Marty in the Back to the Future game. I heard about this. I saw a news article. Telltale Games making Back to the Future and Jurassic Park into a game. And I was like, wow, that looks awesome. I would love to be, a, you know, the voice of Marty McFly, but there's that is no way in hell that's going to happen. And at the time, Telltale was a lot smaller, so you just have to Google Telltale to get like a list of phone numbers. And um, Rhoda was uh, the first name that popped up, so I called her and I left a message that was basically this nerdy, like, hey, my name is Adrian Locasio. I do a great Marty. You know, I tried to sound as much like Marty as I could. I was like, it's my density to have this role. But I remember the, it going across someone's desk, them hearing this audition and just saying, man, this kid sounds exactly like Michael J. Fox when he was young. Doc, you gotta listen to me. The bruise, the bruise on your head. I know how that happened. You told me the whole story. It was almost no discussion. It was just kind of, yeah, we heard that MP3 that I think he recorded on like a rock band microphone with like, it was just insane, but it was that good. AJ's Marty McFly is damn near flawless. Uh, when I heard his voice, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I listened to it and if I didn't know that this was not Michael, I would have assumed it was. He was such a crucial piece to have that energy throughout the entire series. Um, so it was, it was amazing working with him. I was obsessed with the movies growing up, like obsessed with Back to the Future. So it was like, it was something that was always in the back of my head. It was just a silly party trick at, you know, what went from a social thing to party trick to actually becoming very useful. <laughs> so, Jennifer. Uh-huh. What do you think of me? I don't. Working on this from a fan perspective was the most pressure I've ever felt on anything. Trying to invent a way where we can pull you along through the story and then use dialogue options where you get to choose what Marty's gonna say. And I think that's the kind of the hook for us is giving you a situation and then saying, well, here's three different ways or four different ways that Marty could possibly react. If you were playing Marty, what would you do? And I think that it allows people to really author their own story. Telltale's Back to the Future game is the only game that deserves to be called Back to the Future. It's very true to the spirit of the movies. The voice acting is terrific. The characterization is great. And with the new consoles, the game is just gonna sparkle and jump off the screen. Bringing this game to a new generation, even though it's not that old, is actually super exciting. Like getting to debut it again on all the new platforms, um, Telltale's got a lot bigger of a fan base now, and there's a lot of people who probably didn't know that we made this game. Um, but it's still got a lot of the same core principles that are fun in a Telltale game. You know, we're taking this thing that's super familiar and we're putting our own story in it and allowing you to play it. So, um, in time with the 30th anniversary of the films, now we're getting to kind of add to what's out there in the media and saying, like, you know, you're rebuying the movie again and watching it. Here's a game you might enjoy as well, and it kind of, you know, watch the movies first, get back the nostalgia, and then right after the movie ends, you can pop in the game and continue the story from there. Bloody brilliant. Bob is totally right. There'll never be a Back to the Future 4, but this game pretty much counts as Back to the Future 4. So kind of like Ghostbusters, the video game where it was, you know, at the time where Ghostbusters 3 was never going to be made. They bought out the game and we all accepted it as canon. It's just a shame that Telltale is gone. Really love to, you know, see more stories. But you know, 
Not everything lasts forever. Well, I'm going now. Bye.